before speed dial, you remember how many individual store numbers you had memorized? Uh, quite a few, because I used to call each store for the for the daily sales. I don't know. I don't remember. Somebody exactly. said they thought fifty to seventy. Oh, easy, easy, easy. How is that even possible? No, easy. I've always had a thing about uh, numbers. Yeah. You said the only time I'm not thinking about Starbucks is when I'm sleeping. <laughs> Did I say that? Uh huh. Well, <laughs> that's probably true. On, on your mind? Well, I think that you much? know. It's just it's 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 inside me. You know, it's. Uh, I worry about it. I'm concerned about it. I love Starbucks and my and my family at levels that are just uh, at such a high level. Uh, you still wake up at 4 a.m. Uh, 4:30. Okay. If I wake up 4:30, I read three papers: the FT, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times in print. Make a French press of coffee. Walk the dogs. Give Sherry coffee, and then I'm. I'm here between 7 and 7.30 or at Starbucks. I've been told sometimes you put expectations on others that you put on yourself, and some think that's unfair. What do you think? I think that may be true. I think I've been able to see things in people that they don't see in themselves. And I think that's kind of one of my strengths. And, 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 and in doing so, I ask more of people than perhaps they think they can give. In what ways are you a hard boss? Well, I don't expect anything from them that I don't expect myself. And I, you know, the expression that I, I've used in my entire career is you, you must be in the mud. It's very, very easy to float at 20,000 feet above the horizon. But in order to build a great, enduring business organization, you need to be in the mud. You need to be in it every single day. And you need to be in it with your people. And then what happens is growth and success is a seductive thing. And it produces hubris. You're not as hungry. You're not willing to fight as hard because you don't have to. You've succeeded. And that's the danger. So how do you create the environment where whatever you've done yesterday is not good enough for today? And uh, that's greatness. Why do you think you do your best when your back's up against the wall? I think I've always been a pressure player. I've always been able to, to find something in me at the hardest moment. You know, I returned to Starbucks a year ago when uh, Starbucks was in trouble post-COVID. I didn't come back because, as a savior, I came back because of my love of the company, my responsibility to 450,000 people and their families, but I came back because I knew how to restore belief and how to restore the culture and values of the company, uh, and we had to go back to the core. And perhaps an even more powerful time was around 2008 Great Recession. You felt like you were on the brink of kind of losing the I, company. Yeah, and I think it's... You have to understand something that success in business is not only not an entitlement, but it's very fragile. When I came back in 2008, uh, Starbucks was facing enormous challenges. The, the, the night before you're set to announce the layoffs, yeah. you're thinking what? I was preparing myself for a, co a company-wide meeting where I would have to announce this and knowing how emotional that was going to be for me. And I started crying at the, in that meeting. I didn't sleep the night before, and it was an excruciating, emotional moment standing up in front of the entire company and telling Starbucks in order to save the company, we had to close stores and ask people to leave the company. And that was very, very difficult. That was a, as tough a moment as I've had. What did that teach you? You know, not every moment is a cheerleading moment in building a company. It was going to be a fracturing moment at Starbucks, and all I could do was be truthful and authentic. When you got through it, though, uh, meaning Starbucks was on the other side of these challenges, yeah. take me to the emotion of the affirmation uh, at that annual meeting. I have always had trouble celebrating. Uh, so not a, not a strength of mine has been the ability to celebrate. It's been a criticism of people who have worked with me over the years and saying, God, we just did this incredible thing and you know, when are we going to celebrate? Where do you keep the analyst reports and major stories oh, yeah. from that period? I have every analyst report that was ever written about the company 
that was dramatically negative. I've used those as motivation and just put them in a the drawer and every now and then during those periods reminded myself of uh, what people were saying. Uh, hold grudges? I don't think I hold a grudge, but I have a long memory. <laughs> what do you think the likelihood is the relationship gets repaired with the original Starbucks founders? It's, it's not that there's bad relations, honestly. We haven't seen each other in a number of years. Uh, I don't think they ever imagined, nor did I, that Starbucks would achieve what it has. Uh, they made decisions at the time that were good for them. There was no pressure to leave Starbucks. It was their decision. Um, and we saw the world very differently, and that's just the way it ended up. Uh, succession. Yeah. After the, the first go around, you said, uh, of the list of the most important things that a public CEO has to get right, succession is in the top three. I did not get it right this first time around. Your thoughts on that? I live by that quote because the fiduciary responsibility of a public CEO is to ensure succession. I don't think I got it right twice uh, for a whole host of reasons. This time around, I think uh, my hopes and dreams is that Loxman is the right guy and want to do everything I possibly can to support him. Uh, but I'm not going to live forever. And uh, I also think it's a young man's game. These jobs are incredibly demanding and difficult. Starbucks is a global company. The CEO of Starbucks has to be a global citizen. You can't manage Starbucks from Seattle. Uh, so it's a complicated job. When we were I won't in, be coming back again, I can tell you that. So when we were in Italy, yeah. uh, and you kindly invited us to your party, the half of the people that I talked to yeah. said they think it will be very hard, uh, if not impossible, for you to walk away, deconnect. I'm on call uh, if they need me, but I'm, I'm not looking to insert myself in any way. And I, I'm at, I am at a very different stage in my life. I want to be the best version of myself for my family, for my friends. And I, uh, I want to do things I have not been able to do because Starbucks has been in my mind in my life 24 hours a day. And I'm trying to remove it. I, I, I need to for my own mental health.